Hi hey everyone, my name is Skylar Hutchin and I am the CTE ambassador. I represent the broadcast journalism era. And today we're interviewing Chris Allison, who took the CTE pathways and now works at DreamWorks. So Chris, tell us a little about yourself and how you connect to the CTE pathways. My name is Chris. I went to Rancho Bernardo High and graduated class of 03. And I took uh, plenty of classes with Paul Meserly. I hope he's not sick of me. Um, and I have uh, since graduated and I've been working in animation for 13 years now. I've worked at Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney, Warner Brothers on stuff like SpongeBob and Looney Tunes and um, happy to be here. Great. Um, what does it mean to be an animator? Well, um, I work in animation. I am not an animator. I'm a storyboard artist and writer. So what happens is um, I draw pretty much where the camera is and what the and what the characters are doing. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, I get to also write for that. Um, so I got to write a SpongeBob episode. I got to write, you know, they tell me a little bit of what needs to happen in the episode and I get to flesh it out and add all the jokes and um, add all the, the, the dialogue and everything else. It seems like you should work on Comedy Central. That's funny. <laughs> um, what I did, I did actually work on Oh, Comedy no way. That's, that's actually really cool. <laughs> um, what inspired you to become a writer then? Uh, well, I think ever since ever since middle school or something, I was always drawing things to make people laugh. Uh, I took those little post-it pads and, um, and I would make little flip books just to make my friends laugh. Um, and uh, this kind of career path is exactly that. I get to kind of write jokes. I get to draw things to make people laugh and whether it's for kids or adults, um, it's kind of all the same. Do you have like an area which you prefer? Like, do you prefer writing animation or storyboarding animation for like kids versus adults? Um, you know what? They each have their their positive um, facets to it. I really like. I honestly do like doing both. Um, I I do my own stuff. Uh, I draw comics and put them out on the internet and that's kind of more adult mad magazine, but a lot of what I work in is kids and I've worked in both of them, but um, I primarily do kids stuff. Okay. So what challenges have you faced in this industry and how have you overcome them? Oh, um, you know what? The animation industry has been evolving really rapidly. There are new programs and um, new workflows and all of that stuff to learn. So I think being, um, there's two sides to that. Learning new programs and, and being um, adept at technology that's always changing is something that is, um, that's been a challenge. And I think just being um, enthusiastic and just diving into new things as, as they come is, is really important. And I think one of the other things is, is actually um, adapting with social media and stuff. A lot of recruiters and hiring people um, are looking at people's social media as a way to hire them and stuff. So, um, you know, not everyone has it, but it's been very important in people finding out who I am and, and letting people know the skills that I have. So making sure that I'm also professional in things on, on some of those outward social media things is, um, ha has been another thing to keep up with. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's so cool to see how social media, well, some could say so cool, some could say other things about how social media really influences our lives. So it is, it, it is a balance. I think that, that that's also, I think the work-life balance is something that has been challenging, which seems to be like what you're, what you're saying, right? Like, yeah, that's also another good and a bad thing. And I think that a lot of people really, there is the potential to burn out, to try and do so many things, to try and be on top of everything. Um, and I think that that is a big challenge to, to, 
to know what is realistic to participate in and what to do and and when to to know your limits and say you know what this is the best that i can do and this is this is what's what works for me so that's also a new challenge that isn't i feel like generations haven't had to deal with that before yeah definitely not so is this animation storyboarding type of vibe, is this where you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? Or is there a new era of study that you want to explore? Mm. Well, I have been writing and storyboarding for a while. I am trying to pitch my own shows um, and movies. I would love to. I've had so many great showrunners um, in my life who have really made my quality of life better. I think that there are people that, that realize um, how important a work life balance is and how people that have that do better work. They're more satisfied in their life. They show up to work rejuvenated. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I would like to provide for other people because just as there are positive examples, there's been negative examples in, in my life. And I think to be someone um, who's learned some of these lessons and to pass that down to younger folks who are working that I would staff on my show um, would be the best way for me to give back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. So you said that you would want to write your own like show or movie. Have you tried before? Yeah, uh, I, I would be lying if I said that I haven't been pitching for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a creative partner, shout out to Ryan Kramer, um, that I've been pitching a ton of stuff with. Um, and it is, it, it's a process. There are some people who um, have the right idea at the right time, right out of college and, and they go straight to showrunner. And there's people, you know, there's showrunners that don't get their first show till they're well into their forties. And I think that one thing that's been humbling coming into animation is realizing how many different paths there are into animation. Mine was pretty straightforward. I got super lucky going to college and went straight in, but um, there are showrunners and storyboard artists and people who come from all sorts of different places. Some go to college, some don't. Um, some, you know, were studying, some fell into it from a tangential, um, uh, from a tangential industry. So I'm just trying to be patient with myself and, um, and just keep trying to be persistent. And, uh, and I'm hoping that it'll, that it'll pay off. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned how you went from college to um, storyboarding. Do you want to describe that process a little bit more? Yes. Um, I went to Cal State Fullerton because a, um, another uh, Paul Meserly alum, Matt Roberts, um, went and said, this animation program is really fantastic. Um, it was, it was great because I could still drive home and see my folks every once in a while. Um, but it was far enough that, uh, I could kind of get the full college experience and it was close enough to Los Angeles that I could get some internships. So I interned, I had two internships. I had one on a Nickelodeon show called The Mighty Bee and one at a animation studio in Los Angeles called Titmouse, where I worked on a show called Metalocalypse and some music videos and stuff for Adult Swim. Um, so I was, I got a great education. I did some internships and got into studios. And the Monday after I graduated, I was working at Nickelodeon on a preschool show called Nihau Kailan. Oh um, so I, I was, I was super lucky to, um, to get into, to get into college and, um, to get into studios and to network and, um, kind of get right in. So, um, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know how to sum it up other than it was, it was a lot of hard work, but I have been very lucky in my, in my journey. Yeah. That's so funny. I remember watching Ni Hao Kai Lan when I was like six. Uh -huh. the, the full circle moment. That's, <laughs> cool. that's really funny. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, do you know any Mandarin Chinese words? Ni Hao. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hey, you know what? That's, that's great. 
<laughs> yeah. I don't know if I remember any, and I worked on it for a year and a half. So that's that's um. really funny. <laughs> that's so cool. Do you have any tips or advice you would you would have wanted to hear when you were in college pursuing this career? Mm, that is good. My my tip for people that are looking ahead um, is that the internet has kind of given us access to people um, who I don't feel like we had the potential to connect with. I was, I was really lucky. I grew up loving Ren and Stimpy and I reached out to some of my favorite artists on that show. One of the co-creators, Bob Camp, is one of the best cartoonists in the world. Um, there was another artist, Vincent Waller, who was really great. And I reached out to some of my heroes um, because I was posting on the internet. Um, I was posting on Blogspot and they were just kind of in my sphere. And I reached out to them and got some really great advice. And if I could have talked to myself um, all those years ago, I would say keep reaching out to more people. And for anyone who's interested in animation, reach out to me. Or just like you said that you potentially want to do some broadcast journalism and you had a hero, reaching out to those people. Um, I think I'm so fortunate to be in animation and I want to lift up as many people as I can and share any of, um, you know, I, I stumbled plenty on my journey, but there were tons of people who were there to lend a hand and give me advice. So I think um, reaching out, being professional, you've, you've done such a great job being professional in your emails and, you know, showing me how passionate you are about learning about these things, um, reaching out, would be the biggest, would be a really big thing because I think no matter what you want to do, networking and figuring out exactly what those people, um, what those people use to get hired and what criteria people are looking for to hire people in the industry and learning all the different pathways are in there are just going to inform you to make better decisions to getting to where you want to be. Yeah. Um, switching topics a little bit, what projects are you working on now, if any, and how long does it take before they become public? Um, well, I, I don't know if I can disclose anything of what I'm working on right now because it's NDA, but I am working on some feature films. And generally those take about three years to produce. So the things that I'm working on now, I won't be able to really talk about um, until they come out in three years and then I won't shut up about them. So um, that's, in the feature film world, it takes a little longer. In animation, uh, let's see, I started working on some of the Looney Tunes cartoons that are coming out on HBO Max right now in 2018. TV usually takes about a year and a half to produce. So um, a little quicker of, of a turnaround for that, but hopefully these, these movies will be worth the wait. So mm -hmm. excited about that. Yeah. Do you have any films or TV shows that is your all time favorite that you've helped produce? Oh, geez. Um, I think being a part of, you know, SpongeBob was huge. That, that was always just so funny and to be able to contribute um, to just a couple episodes. I didn't have a huge role, but uh, to be able to contribute to that was huge. And like I just said, Looney Tunes cartoons um, was a dream come true. Mm -hmm. I really love those old 1940s uh, Tex Avery and Looney Tunes cartoons and all that stuff. And um, our showrunner, Pete Braungart, really great guy. Um, so funny. Uh, just ran a got some of the best crew that I've got to work with. Um, so that was kind of a dream come true on a dream project with dream people. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of the highlights so far that I can talk about. Fair enough. <laughs> so do you have anything else you want to say? I'm giving the floor to you. Hey, I want to ask you a question. How do you feel that your balance of um, of school and social media and some of that is, is it, 
is it is it a challenge to balance because it's kind of a challenge for me i guess mm -hmm. um because there is the uh the want to post all the time and the need to be professional but you know you want to step away from it and stuff are do you feel the same thing yes in a nutshell yes let's say i have delete do you know the app snapchat yeah Okay, I've deleted Snapchat a grand total of like 10 times because I'm like, <laughs> all right, like, I, I don't want to use it anymore. I want to break free. But then I just have so many like relationships on there that I'm like, I don't want to lose a streak. Like, if I delete Snapchat, I will stop talking to them. And then I just get like worked up. And I'm like, I need to redownload it. So that's why it's downloaded on my phone again. Like, I think I deleted it like three days ago. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it just like, especially as a girl, like seeing, having social media, seeing all those other girls on social media, it gets draining. Um, you just kind of like see the perfected image that society wants you to be. And then you like look at the people that go to your school and it's like some of them fit into that category. And then you like see them at school, you look at yourself and you're like, all right. <laughs> and it's just like, so it's just hard. And I think trying to find a balance between like loving yourself and like having a healthy relationship with social media. And then like, as you say, like being professional, like I'm an ambassador for CTE and then I'm hypothetically going to be ambassador for my high school. And so like making sure that I like keep an image of someone who is friendly, um, positive, smart, yada, yada, yada. Like, it's just like, it's a lot of pressure that a 17 year old, I don't think should have, yeah, you know, yeah. like. You're doing a great job, by the way. You are fantastic. <laughs> thank you. The school is so lucky to have you. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Yeah, it's just, sometimes it just gets rough at the end mm -hmm. of the day. It's just like, like today, like, I don't know, I was looking on social media and I was like, I shouldn't be comparing myself to this person. Like I acknowledge it. I see that it's there, but it's like my brain is just like wrapped into it. And it's like, you know, and I'm just trying to avert, but it's it's just hard. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. Well, let me tell you that that there are the same struggles professionally. I've been doing this for 13 years now, and there's still I see people who draw so well, or people are doing wonderful watercolors or this or that. And you get pulled in a million directions. And, and I think recognizing that and working, um, it's something that, that for me has never gone away, but really striving for that balance, I think is so important for all of us, no matter what stage you're at. Um, you know, I'm sure that showrunners are still, <laughs> there's no point where you just stop that. So I think finding, uh, keep striving for those balances, no matter where no matter where you're at is so important. Um, and uh, I wish it would go away at some point, but um, I feel like I'm in a good place where I've got, I've got other things. I've got this drum set behind me. I've got music and other things to help me step away from some of those things so I can focus on um, my own well-rounded life experience, uh, which is very important. So maybe that's my final, mm -hmm. um, takeaway that I could tell myself um, is to remember to stop and smell the roses every once in a while um, that uh, the job and the grind and the and all that stuff is is only one one half of it and to and to be kind and patient with yourself yeah I think you ended it beautifully that was great stop and smell <laughs> thank the you roses. thank you that's all just I wrote it down actually I, I actually <laughs> I just tricked you into, into thinking that I didn't <laughs> yeah, what I just said, whole script, whole script. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You did a good job. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having this interview with me. It was really fascinating learning all about what you do and having this talk about social media with you. It was great. I can't wait to see you on CNN someday. Oh my gosh. Maybe you can have, maybe you can interview me about my show. <laughs> oh, I so will. I so will. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much.